so this is not a full-blown review of chapter 1010, more so just me talking about various things, various controversies around the chapter, and the main reason why I didn't give the chapter essentially a 10 out of 10. For me, so if you didn't know, writing for the chapter 1010, what? writing for the chapter 1010 was a, initially, it was a 9.5 out of 10. It was really, really close to a 10. I love this chapter through and through. I love the Zoro stuff. I love the Luffy stuff, Kaido stuff, Law stuff, the Big Mom stuff. Yeah, okay. But listen, Big Mom, still a warrior, still a beast, but as Kaido says, at, at times, not all the time, but at times pathetic, which it is what it is. It actually gives her more character than most other Yonko. So there's a trade off there, but it does rub your boy the wrong way because I'm a big mom supporter. That being said, I actually wound up dropping the rating down to a nine out of 10 after talking to the lads over on Twitch for the post reaction discussion. So watch that on Twitch. Uh, and of course, subscribe. Or, or, at least follow your boy on Twitch. At least follow your boy. But if you want to, subscribe. That would be amazing. Appreciate that. Thank you. That being said, I want to go over some controversies because the topics were pretty heated. Uh, things did get uh, messy. It is what it is there. But at the same time, all in good faith, I am assuming. I'm hoping. All in good faith. So this video has three main subjects. Number one, Luffy, Conqueror's Hockey, Rio, potentially a Mary Sue moment. So Luffy gets a power up, of course, mid fight. He realizes, hold on, time out. After taking your club attacks, I realized that you can actually imbue or infuse your attacks with Conqueror's Hockey. Now, a lot of folks during my stream were talking about how this is a Mary Sue moment. This is a moment that is not good, not I would say the majority of folks, absolutely not. But there were folks that are saying, this is kind of horse And the reason why is because, or part of the reason why, is because this may make the Rio hockey train that Luffy's gone through moot, pointless. And it's because, well, number one, we have no idea if Roger or Prime Wiper, that flashback, the Odin flashback, if they actually knew the Rio hockey that Luffy knows now. The hockey that can go inside of objects, inside of things, and do internal damage. That's number one. Number two is that we know that Kaido can imbue attacks with Congress hockey, but he himself doesn't actually know the real hockey that can go inside of objects. Because I surmise that's what the scabbards did to him when they first actually did damage to Kaido, and he was confused. He was like, wait, hold on. How can they do damage to me? What's going on? Like, this is Oden's hockey. So Oden's hockey is, I think, that hockey, which I call stage four armor hockey, but that gets a little more complicated, I would argue. So essentially speaking, this that Luffy learned, that he got in this arc, is, at this point in time, in some folks' mind, pointless. Because the Conqueror's hockey now exists, where, again, you can imbue attacks with Conqueror's hockey. Now, for me personally, I argued that... Luffy is probably stacking his Rio armor hockey with the Conqueror's hockey. So he's even bypassing Kaido's defense even more and doing vastly more internal organ damage and so on because he's now imbuing what he learned with the armor hockey with the Conqueror's hockey. That's my assumption. But at the bare minimum, I think that if you read Hilgoro's words in particular about you have to maintain a calm and collected mind and you have to focus on your flow, I think it could be the case where he needed to at least attain a better control of his armor hockey to gain better flow, overall flow of his hockey. So his conqueror's hockey will be a part of that now, where if not for that Rio training, he probably wouldn't actually know this because he wouldn't actually have good hockey control, hockey flow. So after taking a beat from Kaido again, he understands where you can apply Conqueror's hockey very similar to the Rio armor hockey that he's been learning from Hyogoro. That's my assumption. But unfortunately, I can't guarantee it 
because Oda does not explain the hockey power system very well. Things just kind of happen. Though I do think it makes sense for Luffy to actually learn this middle battle because number one, we do have the whole hockey blooming thing, which you got in Whole Cake Island. Then number two, I said before that Luffy is a monster in his own right because he learns things at a very fast growth rate compared to other characters. I did a video last year talking about Luffy being overpowered. That's the main reason why. Luffy learns things at such an accelerated growth rate that it makes him kind of broken. So Luffy won't be like Oden, where Oden was born studly. No, no, no. But Luffy has the exponential, he's gonna get broken really, really quickly. Really, really quickly. And lo and behold, boom, it's happening. So I can understand the grievances. I can understand why some folks say it's a Mary Sue. I don't necessarily think so. But again, to be fair, yes, Oda does not fully explain the hockey system that well. Truly. That's number one. Number two is, I think, an actual issue, which is the reason why I actually brought it from a 9.5 to a, a 9. And that's writing. Out of all of the people on the rooftop, you can easily argue that the person that had the most onus to take down to fight against Kaido was Eustace Captain Kid. You can easily argue that. He and his crew got their butts whooped by Kaido personally, and Apu betrayed them. His crew got molly whopped front and back. His crew gets subjugated. They're sent to Wano country. They're either in Odon or they're Orochi's personal, whatever the hell. And Killer eats a smile devil fruit. Killer is permanently fa 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 fa. Permanently. Those tears that Killer had when he was in Udon. Kid shock of seeing his best man in that state. And Kid and Killer deciding, let's go for Big Mom, makes no sense. That makes absolutely utterly no sense. Now, you could argue, well, okay, okay. In Fishman Island, we did find out that Kid had attacked Big Mom's ship, which is why Tamago and Peckham's, they wanted the gold that Luffy had from the Fishman Island treasury. No. Mm -mm. That does not outweigh what happened to their crew. The Big Mom and Kid stuff doesn't even come remotely close to the Kaido and Kid stuff. The remote, no. When we literally had, at the end of Act 1, in the cell, Luffy and Kid, Kaido, I'm gonna get you! It doesn't make much sense from a writing, from a fundamental writing perspective, I'd argue. So I think Oda did kind of drop the ball on that one. But we have to wait and see how things roll. Obviously, in the future, let's say Kyle's executed and the kid and killer do it. Uh. But that's being generous. That's being very, very generous. The fact of the matter is that kid still left to go against Big Mom when he shouldn't have. Considering, again, kid, you can argue, who has the most onus to take down Kaido. So that's number two. And then finally, number three, which was a big thing on Twitter, which supposedly. They may have been trolling, but a lot of folks on Twitter are saying, No, I want to drop one piece. I'm so mad. I'm get him. Is the Zoro situation. Zoro, best shot, full power, Ashra, potentially, potentially, keyword right there, imbued instinctively, conquerors hockey into that attack. Couldn't even bring Kaido to his knees. Permanent scar, but does it really matter? Does it really matter when he couldn't even bring Kaido to his knees? And a lot of folks were upset. The main thing here though, as a result of this chapter, is that the ZKK movement took a massive blow. A massive blow to the gut. That was a kidney shot. <clears throat> Coughing up blood. <clears throat> I won't say a KO, not until the arc's actually over, I suppose. I'll give them, I'll give them that leeway. But if there was a one percent chance that Zoro would kill Kaido, now it's down to 0 .01, .001. The odds of Zoro killing Kaido now are extraordinarily slim, and the ZKK movement has taken a huge blow, especially now that you have Luffy talking to Law and Zoro saying, "Traffy, you, know, you guys can go down." Because I got this. Me. One on one. So for me, I'm looking forward to hopefully, hopefully we do get a gear five. 
SBS talked about Gear 5. Maybe. And I said before that his Gear 5 could revolve around Conqueror's Hockey. And uh, he just learned. So Gear 5 could literally be on the horizon. However, for the ZKK movement, it, it took a huge, huge shot. And I know some folks wanted to say, well, Zoro wasn't at full power for that attack because of his body's condition. One Piece is not like Naruto. In One Piece, characters can unleash their full power despite their body condition. Think of Luffy against Doflamingo with the King Kong gun. Think of Luffy against Rob Lucci with the final Jet Gatling. One Piece characters, for the most part, whether it's Luffy or the Strat crew, whether it's any opponents, when it comes to their max power attacks, they can always unleash them despite their body's condition. But their body's condition plays a role in the aftermath, where after their max power attack, that's when we see how they operate afterwards. So Luffy's King Cobra during Katakuri at the end of the fight versus Luffy's King Cobra let's say at the beginning of the fight, it would still be the same power King Cobra, but Luffy's condition afterwards is what's important there. So when Zoro says, that was my best shot to Kaido, that was Zoro's best shot. That was Zoro full power. But compare that to Luffy, after two shots, he knocks Kaido on his butt. So once again, Luffy, I think, continues to push ahead of the rest of the crew. Despite the fact that a lot of characters in the crew have gotten power-ups, Luffy continues to push even further. Cause he's getting, even now, his hockey is blooming, even now. The fight against Kaido is nowhere near over. And it's very clear that if it was one-on-one -on -one from the very beginning, Kaido would have destroyed any person there. But now in this situation, Luffy is messed up. Kaido is messed up. And Luffy's about to go one on one. Potentially. This is catapulting Luffy into a sphere of power that I thought was further along the road. Like, let's say an Elbath. But it's now. It's now. And honest to goodness, it makes you think, yeah. We really are reaching end of series One Piece. Where over the next, let's say, two, three, four years, we're really going to be seeing things like Zoro versus Mihawk and Zoro beating Mihawk. We're going to be seeing the fabled Shanks and Blackbeard, hopefully at least, right? I'm hoping the Shanks and Blackbeard altercation. We're going to be finding out what the One Piece is. And I said before that there's a good chance, and I think that Don Chinjao's words stand true. They stand very firm. Luffy will surpass the Admirals, surpass the Yonko, surpass the Pirate King himself. Luffy potentially will be the strongest person in One Piece come the end of One Piece. Potentially, of course. So the main thing for the chapter downgrade from a 9.5 to a 9 for me again was the kid stuff. But when it comes to the controversies, Number one with the Congress hockey, arm hockey thing, yeah, it is complicated um, because Oda doesn't explain it in full detail, unfortunately, but you know my stance on that one. I think it's relatively fine, absolutely. And then for ZKK, I was never on that ship anyway, and folks that were on that ship are, it's like the Titanic. They're going down, hard. But, hey, light bolts are there, who knows? Zoro can maybe execute Kaido, then boom, ZKK's Oh my god, it happened! Woo! We did it! We did it! We did it! Yeah! Who knows? Either way. And by the way, if you're wondering, for me, what's a 10 out of 10 chapter? That would be chapter, let's say, 958 or 957. Uh, the ultimate chapter. Where you have like, the boundary reveals of the Yonko. That was the perfect chapter of One Piece. Perfect. 10 out of 10. Either way, I would argue an amazing chapter of One Piece. In this video, I just want to do some controversy about the chapter because things during the stream did get pretty heated. So on that note, let me know your stance on the subject matter at hand. Rate the video, comment, subscribe. Peace. Have a nice one.